So the frontline quadruple treatment with isotuximab, uh, carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone were a, was investigated in the CONCEPT trial, a trial for newly diagnosed high-risk myeloma patients, only high-risk patients, however, both transplant eligible and transplant non-eligible. And I have the great pleasure and privilege to present the data today virtual. And um, so this uh, combination of a monoclonal anti-CD38 antibody, the isotoximab with carfilzomib, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone, is in the trial given in induction, consolidation, and also maintenance. Uh, however, the maintenance is without the dexamethasone. And transplant eligible patients undergo also high dose methylene and autologous stem cell transplantation. So, here at the ESCO meeting, we reported of the first 50 patients on response during the sixth cycle as a KRD induction. And what we saw is that we had. Um, uh, in those 50 patients, 100% over response rate, 90% um, of patients achieved equal or more than a VGPR, and 46% of patients achieved a CR or stringent CR. Uh, we had also done an MRD assessment in 33 patients during induction in the transplant arm. And of those, 20 were at this time, at this early time, MRD negative. So. We think that these are really promising data. The, the trial just completed recruitment and um, we will continuously work on the data and report on the data, but we are very encouraged also by the feedback of the colleagues. So over the isotoximab KRD regimen, we saw a very favorable toxicity profile. The main toxicities were hematologic with a predominant um, neutropenia followed by lymphopenia and leukopenia. However, grade three or four thrombocytopenic events were rare with over 14%. Regarding non-hematological toxicities, we saw only very few grade three or four toxicities, especially peripheral neuropathy, which is often a hamper even in VTD or VRD regimens, those rates were low. We had, we had an uh, um, overall rate, all grades of peripheral neuropathy of 16%. We had no death on study. So that the toxicity profile was really favorable. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> I think, I personally think that all the data now coming out on quadruple treatment are really showing that what we currently know, it should be the standard of care. And because we see that we can induce high rates of MRD negativity and we know that we can translate uh, MRD negativity in a better progression free, but even more in a better overall survival in our myeloma patients. So, I think we have the unmet need to establish that, and um, I, I think the, the, it hopefully justifies also the effort. So, Belanta mafodotine is an immunoconjugate. It's directed against the BCMA, the B cell maturation antigen, um, as also other constructs are, especially the CAR T cells. And the drug was first investigated in very refractory patients and showed promising results, especially regarding induction of deep responses in a late stage of the disease. And here, uh, the first combination data are shown with a combination with bortezomib and dexamethasone. And uh, so as it is usual, the, there has to be found a dose, and this is a dose escalation trial and uh, of this combination treatment. But the, so the patient population is still limited in a number, but we see very encouraging 
results with an overall response rate of close to 80 percent. And in the cross trial comparisons, as complicated as they are, um, is that superior to Gordesumab DAX alone, what we know from a long, long time. So as many patients are now receiving the immunomodul immunomodulatory drugs, especially lidomide during first line and very long, we have a need for um, image-free uh, treatment combinations, which are effective. And I think we have to expect here very promising data when we oversee more patients. So I personally also treated now a number of patients with Valantamab nifotatine, and it's a very distinct and unique um, toxicity of this drug or drug class also. But we learn very much to, to handle this with a uh, fixed eye drop schedule, supportive care. Um, so the good news is that the uh, corneal toxicity normally is absolutely reversible. And um, the impact on life quality is very, some patients who have objective uh, changes uh, when they are examined by an ophthalmologist don't even have any symptoms, other have symptoms. So um, we learned that the drug can be paused and can be also dose reduced. So I think overall it's a new uh, toxicity, but um, it's normally very well to handle. So this tourmaline trial investigates the exosomal maintenance in transplant non-eligible patients, whereas we have already the full publication of investigating the drug after transplant, high dose methylene and ontologous stem cell transplant. So those were non-transplant eligible patients having had a fixed time treatment as a first line treatment and then underwent exazomib or placebo in this randomized trial. So it's a placebo control trial, which makes it unique. And the exazomib maintenance resulted in a 34% reduction in the risk of progression. Um, and this was statistically significant. Um, however, we have now also to consider that most of the novel regimens as standard of care regimens in treatment of newly diagnosed transplant non-eligible myeloma patients are continuous treatment regimens. So in this whole context, this is an important uh, try with an important message. However, we have currently many different treatments available and fixed duration treatment is normally not anymore performed regularly in this setting. Honestly, I don't know if it will. Um, in the transplant eligible setting, it, it seemed to be less effective than the lenalidomide maintenance. However, there are patients who do not tolerate lenalidomide and there are countries where lenalidomide is not available. So per se, it would be good to have an alternative. Um, how that will be translated, in the real life, this will be the decision of the authorities, the competent authorities, and currently I do not know what we have to expect in this manner. Yeah, this is a very interesting drug. Um, 
it took us all a long time to understand what the immunomodulating agents are doing and the full mechanism is still, I think, not fully understood. However, we do know a lot and we do know um, the cascade or the main signal cascade where they are acting in the cell. And um, the cell modes are drugs where it was possible to enhance the affinity of the drug to the targets, so making them more effective and without adding toxicity per se. So this makes it very attractive. And uh, the trial now presented that were the first trial of the CC 480 assembly was very promising over a response rates of close to 50% in a pre-treated patient population show that the drug is effective, that it's well tolerated. And I think um, it's a natural thing that we are dealing now for more than a decade with um, thalidomide and nanalidomide. And this is now the next generation which was just made more effective like we had this in chronic myeloid leukemia when we had the second generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors. And we now have to establish those in uh, treatment combinations and, and, um, and uh, do the appropriate trials. And we will see if they then will substitute uh, the first generation of immunomodulating agents. So the Boston trial is a randomized trial, one-to-one -one randomization between selenexo, bortezomib, and dexamethasone versus bortezomib, dexamethasone in the well-known established um, relapse uh, treatment scheme. And um, the trial showed um, uh, with a primary endpoint um, of uh, progression-free survival, including uh, roughly um, uh, 400 patients uh, that uh, the addition of selenexor, so the extension of the bortezomib dexamethasone uh, doublet towards a triplet um, increased the efficacy so that the progression uh, free survival uh, in the selenexor group was uh, close to 14 months compared to 9.5 months in the standard arm, and this was the hazard ratio of 0.7, so a clear superior, superiority. Um, what is very interesting is that the once weekly application of bortezomib in this experimental arm and the once weekly application of Zelenexor was not only convenient but resulted also in a, in a marked and significant reduction in peripheral neuropathy. We know that Zelenexor has. Um, some side effects, which are um, nausea, fatigue, um, other potential non-hematologic side effects. But this once weekly schedule, they were mostly mild. And, um, and uh, so that uh, the tolerability obviously is better as in the first published data on highly refractory multiple myeloma patients. So, Again, here, as I said before, this is an important um, image-free triplet. Uh, when images are given regularly during first-line treatment for a long time. Yes, I personally think that the CAR T cell data were again very intriguing and. As we saw at the ASH meeting, we saw here um, also um, great data, especially out of the CARDITUDE trial, but also with the other CAR-T constructs, there were three oral presentations. And I think this is still uh, a great achievement and these treatment strategy will 
definitely bring us forward in treatment of multiple myeloma.